this was such a wonderful conference um, at the AAN, and they've asked us to uh, do this uh, symposium a couple of times, uh, this course rather, and um, this course is, uh, we assembled a, a great international expert team of clinician researchers. We reviewed diagnosis and uh, etiologies and treatments and stigma. Um, and we were trying to foster a growing dialogue between neurology and psychiatry and psychology and rehab medicine, multidisciplinary approaches, because that is going to be the team that you want to help treat the patients. And the treatments, um, one of the ones that we talked about, there are a number that are out there, but one that we talked about uh, is the growing evidence base for neurobehavioral therapy. Uh, that's some of the work that we've done using um, a manualized 12 session workbook where the patient, uh, they do the work, they write the information in the workbook and they come and meet with the counselor or the therapist and talk about the work that they've done in weekly therapy. And so neurobehavioral therapy is a multimodal integrative whole person psychotherapy and it aims to treat neuropsychiatric disorders and the common comorbidities that we talked about that so frequently occur depression anxiety ptsd so on and it uses various psychotherapeutic modalities to tailor treatment and equip the patient with tools to connect the past and the present and address symptoms and schema or core beliefs it helps them to examine self and to develop healthy interactions in their social environment. And the psychotherapeutic uh, modalities that are used in neurobehavioral therapy um, include individual psychoeducation and motivation, motivational interviewing. There's interpersonal psychotherapy, which helps with communication. There are some conventional cognitive behavioral elements to it. Um, sometimes people will say, well, it's just CBT. It's not CBT because it is multimodality and because of the formulation. Um, it includes some dialectical behavioral elements, self-management. Once the patient is equipped with these tools to go into those hard places, there are some psychodynamic elements to look at the then and there and the here and now using a schema-focused uh, thought record. And then it helps to bring the unconscious to conscious, and then it helps to make the implicit explicit. There's some acceptance and commitment therapy elements to it. And so really looking at this multimodality whole person care using a biopsychosocial spiritual formulation to look at the whole person, that's where you're treating the whole patient. And doing that in a, a multidisciplinary environment with assistance from uh, rehab colleagues and speech and language and in occupational therapy and in physiotherapy, that's where we can get neurology, psychiatry, psychology, and rehab all together to help in treatment with these patients. So they've asked us to, a number of people have uh, asked us to train people, and we do that via distance supervision, which is uh, sometimes people say, well, can I come to Brown to um, train with you? And I'll say no, because um, that's going to take a long time. And because I'm not here, I'm, I'm here and there. And so uh, all the time. So we do it via distance supervision. And so if I'm in clinic and you're in clinic and I can see patients here and you can see patients there, then the, the department basically says, we want some of your clinical time to be able to train somebody so we can start a clinic here, uh, wherever it is. So uh, clinics around the country uh, have, has, have asked me to help set up some of these FND clinics or conversion disorder clinics and um, train one or two of the people at their sites. And interestingly, again, because I do neurology and psychiatry, really I'm trying to break down the barriers between the two. And so to do that, we're actually training neurologists, epileptologists, psychiatrists, psychologists, neuropsychologists, um, neuropsychiatrists, social workers, even nurses. So the people who are psychologically minded, but also have a neurological understanding of brain and behavior, then um, it helps to have that mindset to engage with this neuropsychiatric population. So people will see um, patients in their own setting and they'll record them. And then I'll review the videos with the treatment videos with the clinician and they get there in their setting and continue to um, live their life there. 
uh, and then uh, that way uh, it helps them in their own ecological setting. And then after they um, do what we call two beta patients, where they see patients with uh, confirmed diagnoses, then uh, after they've gone through the workbook with the patient taking control of your seizures workbook, and they've read the therapist guide for treatment, and they treat their two beta patients, and we do the one-on-one -on -one supervision via remote supervision, then they start treating on their own. And when they do that, uh, they're able to develop their own clinic. So we've done this with people around the country, both in civilian hospitals and in VA hospitals in the U.S.